Welcome back to FM Story. We've got some big games coming up in this episode. We're halfway through our sixth season with Sporting. We're looking for our fifth title in the row. We are currently top of the table, but we're only two points clear of Benfica and they've got a game in hand. And our first game up in this episode is a home game against Benfica in the league. We've also got the round of 16 in the Champions League coming up in this episode. And we've got the first leg of the Tactics of Portugal semi-final as well. Before we do get started, if you do enjoy the video, please like, comment and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get going. So we're straight into the action with the Benfica game. We've made a couple of changes to the starting lineup from the team that played in the Allianz Cup semi-final at the end of the last episode. Dario Sugo's come back in instead of Kounder. Thiago Tomas is coming up front. And we've brought Ismail Asari on the left-hand side because Valde is not 100% fit. Uh, and hopefully Sars presence in front of goal will we'll do well for us. Interestingly enough, their leading scorer, Patrick Schick's not involved. He's got a broken wrist at the moment, so hopefully we can uh, take advantage of that. Right, they've got the throw. Silvio twins it back. Fernandez, Tomas flicks it. Um, Tatum Santos, Tomas, Ardegulas through. Puts across the defender. What a start. Just what we needed. Um, we just need now need to not do anything stupid like we did in the away game against Benfica, where we threw away that one goal lead and end up losing two nil, uh, two one. Um, but great start, one shot, one on target, one goal. Oh, this is going top corner. Yep, almost guarantee a free kick from there's going in, especially when it's the. The opposition. It's a stupid place to give away a free kick. And now we've got it all to do again. We got off to a great start with that opening goal, but then we've seemed to have barely done it. I mean, we've had plenty of shots and plenty on target, just not good enough to get a highlight. Uh, in fact, there's not much happened apart from the two goals. But we need to get back in front and we need to hold on to it this time. Rewalt wins the header, but they pick up the loose ball. Oh, come on. Right, Estevez wins it back. Right, drop it to Gula. Right, play it to Bald or Asimovic or Baldi, one of the two. Why did he hold on to the ball so long? Baldi. How did he squeeze that past the keeper? I mean, the ball should have gone to him much earlier from Thiago Thomas. He seems to want to take on the whole of the Benfica defence. But he wins it back, comes to a Sugo, he just lifts the ball over the defence. Balde, from such a tight angle, just lifts it over the keeper and into the net. Because if we'd lost that, we were very much second or third favourites to the title there. But We were better in the second half. Still not very good for the whole game, but we won. And it gives us that advantage. So we're now five points clear over Benfica, but they've played a game less. We're two points clear of Porto, who've played. Well, in fact, we're probably now five points clear of Porto because they'll, they'll have a game in hand as well, but we were two points ahead of them. Um, so we're in, it's in our control at the moment. We just need to make sure we don't do anything stupid going forward. We're in the middle of March and we've started making heavy weather of, of some of these performances. Um, we've got a big second leg of the round of 16 coming up. I mean, there were so many more easy games we could have uh, been drawn against than Barcelona. But after the win against Benfica, we nearly threw away all the advantage we've got. We went away to Pacas de Ferreira and just could not hit the target. 21 shots, only four of them on target. And yeah, at that point we're thinking things aren't going particularly well. We then went away to Famalicão and didn't start the game very well. Uh, we brought Coruas on at half time. He picked up a goal 
Um, we missed a penalty late on. I do hope none of these cup games, be it the Allianz Cup final, the Attack of the Portugal semi final, the Champions League, I hope none of them go to penalties because we've had at least three players miss penalties this season. Um, but in the end, we did enough to come away with a victory away at Family Cow. We were then at home to Santa Clara. Um, we were okay in the first half. Balde picked up a goal um, just after the half hour. We made tough work of it until we picked up a couple of goals in the last 10 minutes from Dario Sugo and Ismail Asar just to, to secure the victory. We then went away to Portman and another performance where we struggled to hit the target, but Korowas got a goal in the first half and again we had two late goals that made the scoreline look a lot more comfortable than it actually was. Mateus Fernandes and then Korowas with a second in injury time. We were then at home to Rio Ave and another performance where we struggled to hit the target basically. And we were we were pretty poor going forward and we had to rely on a, a Rualt header from a Santos corner yet again. Um, but at least we picked up the victory. We then had the first leg of the Tacta Portugal semi final against Chavez and we eventually scored a penalty. Santos in the first half. It's the first time we scored in a while. Like I say, I think there was at least three players that missed them this season. Um and then Again, in the second half, we turned it on. On the hour, Tiago Thomas scored. And then Asugo, Balde, Coroas made it a lot more comfortable going into the, into the second leg. We were then away at Braga. And although we had a goal disallowed in the first half, again, we're struggling to hit the target. They didn't have a single shot in the whole game. And yet, we couldn't come away with a victory. Um, I suppose at least we didn't get beat. but. It's a, it's a concern about the number of chances and the, and the lack of hitting the target that we're doing. We then went away to Barcelona in the first leg of the last 16. We got off to a pretty decent start with uh, the Ruolt header. Unfortunately, they scored pretty quickly afterwards with Anzi Fati. And then once those goals went in, neither team really had any decent like chances you would expect them to score. And in the end, it sort of towards the end of the second half, the game petered out into a draw. Obviously, we've got home advantage for the second leg, so hopefully we can we can overcome them. And then in the most recent league game, we did our best to throw it away. Again, I mean, if you look at the XG, neither team did anything. Just before they scored, we decided to switch the formation and went back to the three at the back and tried the two up top to see if that would make a difference. And it did make a difference because almost immediately they scored. And then somehow Thiago Thomas got two goals. We survived two VAR decisions for offside in injury time. And somehow we came away with a, with a victory. Um, I don't know how, but we came away with a victory. And... We we had to rest players as well. That was the, that was the thing. We had players that were really struggling for fitness that we we desperately need for the game against Barcelona, and yet again rotating the team almost came back to to bite us in the ass. As far as the league's concerned, we're now six points clear of Benfica. They've got a game in hand, and we are eight points clear of Porto. We've got two games in hand, so we are. Um, clear at the top but the big game we've got Porto I think in the middle of April that's going to be the big game that's going to go a long way to decide the tax if we lose to Porto then basically that's our advantage gone so for the second leg we've opted for Thiago Thomas from the left hand side with Coroas through the middle he definitely seems to be our form striker and so, and Thomas seems to be in form as well. And um, we'll have Baldi on the bench. Um, but hopefully, like if we need him. We've got his pace to come off the bench in the second half. Right, a free kick on the edge of the box. Ardagula steps up to take it. And he's hit the bar. Why is it whenever the opposition get free kicks there, they always score them no matter what?
I've headed it clear. And we keep going left, Simovic. There's Thiago Thomas looking for Coruas, but it's over here. It's the final ball. We've got it back. Thiago Thomas this time. The final ball's better. And Coruas opens the scoring. We pressed them pretty high. Ad Gula wins it back. Tess Fernandez. And finally, a decent final ball from Thiago Thomas. And Coruas just passes it past the keeper. I mean, that first half was much improved on game against Estoril, but they're going to have some chances at some point, so we need to make sure we don't do anything stupid at the back. Santos with the corner. Ruolt, the old reliable. Santos corner, Ruolt header at the near post. And based on how the match has gone so far, that should be enough to see us through. Santos with another corner. It was aimed for Ruol again, but they've hit it clear. Thiago Thomas picks the ball up into the box. Coroas scores again. That's got to be game over now. 3 0 up. Really comfortable victory in the end. They were, I mean, they didn't have a single shot on target in the whole game. And uh, we're through to the next round, through to the quarter final. It's time for the youth intake, which we're not expecting much of this season. The last couple of seasons haven't been great. And the preview was for a three-star average intake with the highest grade being a C. So don't think we're going to see an awful lot from that. Since the Barcelona game, we have played one league game. We were at home to Lechos, who actually took the lead. And... We were quite concerned, quite concerned with how it was going because we we just didn't do anything. But Tears Fernandez scored from the edge of the area to level it up. Um, we brought Coroas on at half time. He got a couple of goals in the second half. We were we did play the best part of half an hour with ten men because Gabriel Menino got his second yellow card. Um, but in the end, it was a pretty comfortable victory. What it means as far as the league table is concerned, we've already qualified for the Champions League next season. Um, we are. Currently five points clear of Porto, who've got a game in hand. And we're eight points clear of Benfica, who've got a game in hand. So we're in a pretty decent position. But still, that game against Porto in the middle of April is going to be a, a big one. We've had the draw. We've had the draw for the quarterfinal of the Champions League. And we've been drawn against PSG. It was one of the better draws. We, I mean, there wasn't really a, a good draw to be had. Um, in that, if we make it past PSG, then it's the winner of Liverpool or Chelsea in the semi-final. Um, the only concerning thing is that PSG, second leg of the PSG game, is right before the Porto game in the league. Um, so that sort of run in April with PSG in the Champions League, Porto in the league, Chavez in the second leg of the Tackers of Portugal, Benfica in the Allianz Cup final. That's going to be a busy, busy stretch. Now, as far as the youth intake is concerned, like I said, it was a three-star average one apparently with no one above a C. So the fact that we've got an elite talent and two top talents is interesting. Um, and then there's not an awful lot beyond that. The elite talent, Bruno Sol, Taboas, centre midfielder, 17 natural fitness is, is pretty impressive, but he's not exactly going to be a threat in the air anytime soon. Um, like technique and the passing, the work rate, there's, some, there's plenty of stuff there to, to begin with. Uh, I mean, we are looking at a five star potential. But there's only one star current ability, so whether he actually ever gets anywhere near that five star would be interesting. Um, but I think it'll certainly be a while before we get to that stage. Then, in terms of the the top talent, so we've got Rafa Roris, central defender, six foot, not the best in the air. 
good in terms of tackling, but the, the technicals, mentals, and physicals are actually quite lacking there. Uh, but he is only a three and a half star potential. And then we've got Ambrosio Fazendero, four star potential centre forward. The mentals are good, the physicals less so. Pretty decent in the air, heading wise, for someone who's five foot ten with only nine jumping reach. Um, but yeah, definitely. I mean, if you look at the the players we've brought in, who who can play up front, like especially even the ones in the B team that that we signed in the last couple of summers, I don't think he's going to be anywhere near what they are. Um, and then in terms of the good talents, I mean, what we're looking at best of three star potential there. Yeah, there isn't a great deal in this. I mean, I think we'll potentially sign. Certainly the elite talent and top talent. And then we're maybe looking at Palaco, Cabral and Borges. And that's the end of another episode. We're still in with a chance of winning every competition we've entered this season. Obviously, Champions League is going to be tough. We've got a final coming up against Benfica and potentially a final coming up against Benfica or Porto in the tack to Portugal. We're in pole position in the league. We just need to make sure we don't do anything stupid in the away game at Porto. Join us next time to see how many of these tight. Join us next time to see how many of these trophies we can pick up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you then.